So good afternoon. That is a tough act to follow, I will say. But I am thrilled to be here this afternoon sharing the stage with two leaders and friends as we kick off what will undoubtedly be a pretty amazing conference. So throughout my career, I have been asked to consider what my vision and my hopes are for the future of our profession. And I think whether it's in a strategic planning session or just in casual conversation, this is something we should all consider creatively and critically. And when I think back to the conversations I've had about this, one seemingly simple answer always comes to the forefront of my mind. And that is that I want genetic counselor to be a household term. Wendy already alluded to it. I want people to hear the term genetic counselor and immediately know what it means to them, to a friend, or to a family member. So that brings me to a brief story about my friend Marianne. Marianne and I met over 10 years ago, and she was one of my patients, and I saw her in two different pregnancies, and then years passed by, and our paths crossed again in our neighborhood school. Today, far removed from that scenario that first connected us, Marianne and I are friends and neighbors, and to this day, she still introduces me to new people as this is Jen, my genetic counselor and my friend. <laughs> and it took me back the first few times she said it, but then I started to think about it. Mary Ann cherishes what first connected us, as do I. And with the seemingly simple introduction, she has opened so many opportunities for me to share with people who we are and what we do. And while that doesn't define our friendship, it is part of our story, and she is our advocate day in and day out. And for that, I'm thankful. And I will say in these conversations that I have, just on the soccer field or in the carpool line or in the grocery store, I do see more recognition than ever when I tell people what I do for a living. And some of them even have stories of their own to share. With genetic counselors being on the top 10 fastest growing professions or the top five STEM careers pretty consistently, I can't say I'm surprised, but I can say that I'm incredibly proud. So next, my next seemingly simple hope is that one Halloween, my doorbell rings and I open the door, <laughs> and there is a kid on the other side dressed as a genetic counselor. I'll even take a zombie genetic counselor. I'm not particular, but... That's next on my list. So I know that I cannot do justice in the few minutes that I have to all of the changes that have happened um, since this organization has began. But what I will say is that genetic counselors tend to be numbers people, right? I mean, we're not going to jump into Hardy Weinberg. We're not going to do anything crazy. But I would like to take the few minutes I have just to share some numbers that I hope will illustrate where we are as a profession and as an organization. 5,171. I don't know about you guys, but when I got the email in September from ABGC announcing that we had surpassed 5,000 certified genetic counselors, I had an incredible feeling of pride. And I really hope that every one of you did too. This is truly a celebration of every student, every mentor, every supervisor, every exam item writer, every employer, and the list can go on and on. So cheers to 5,000 strong. It really is an incredible journey. So obviously, the clinical opportunities, roles, and responsibilities of genetic counselors today is vast. Genetic counselors um, have forged new opportunities across the healthcare spectrum. Genetics has become a subspecialty of every medical specialty from cardiology to ophthalmology. And genetic counselors have integrated themselves in areas that didn't even know they needed us. Access to genetic counselor services continues to expand, with 62% of genetic counselors reporting utilization of alternative service delivery models and getting creative in ways to interact with their patients. 14% of genetic counselors report counseling patients in a language other than English. As genetic counselors, we do recognize our 
significant challenges that we face. I'm going to move on um, and share with you the ne my next number, okay? So 45. 45 is the number of genetic counseling training programs in the US. 40, the number of international genetic counseling training programs. Okay, that's pretty incredible. So as we celebrate growth, we also recognize the need for an increased recruitment and training to meet the demand for genetic counselor services. Class sizes have increased, curriculum has evolved, and the need for expanded clinical opportunities is evident. Our program directors and their faculty have rise to the challenge to provide our students with exposure to the vast amounts of genetic information, as well as clinical field opportunities that are necessary to prepare them for the future of our profession. Today, genetic counseling students can access any journal article with the touch of a button. They can, they have infinite opportunities for case prep at their fingertips, and they can get an instant score from their board examination exam, which I'm super jealous of. <laughs> but one thing hasn't changed, and that is the training that we receive as genetic counselors is unique. It provides us with infinite opportunities and sets us apart from other healthcare professionals. Sure, we are experts in many things genetic, but it is the communication skills and counseling skills that we bring alongside our inheritance patterns and our risk assessments that makes us and only us genetic counselors. Seventy percent. Seventy percent is the percentage of genetic counselors today who are younger than NSGC as an organization. <laughs> Think about that. Our organization is primed for productivity. With over 4,000 members, 75% of whom are members of a SIG, and 25% of whom volunteer in some capacity, NSGC continues to be a place for collaboration, for professional growth, for grassroots efforts, and for friendships. NSGC has approximately 100 members who are in formal leadership positions, 25 of whom represent NSGC as liaisons to other professional organizations, such as ACOG, ASCO, ACMG, to name a few. The opportunity for genetic counselors to represent our profession and have a seat at the table has become the norm in 2019 but certainly not without the perseverance and grit of those who first demanded a seat at the table and undoubtedly made their mark. NSGC has been nimble and NSGC has been proactive, allowing us to meet the needs of our members in a space that is unchartered, unpredictable, and dynamic. With state licensure bills passed in 29 states, over 50% of genetic counselors billing for their services, and the recent introduction of our federal bill, the Access to Gener Genetic Counselor Services Act, NSGC continues to advocate for our profession and in turn those we serve. Four, the strategic area of focus on diversity and inclusion. With celebration and reflection comes truth and humility. And in 2019, the 2021 strategic plan, the NSGC board outlined what I think is probably one of the most important internally focused strategic initiatives to date. These member focused goals aim to promote a culture of diversity and inclusivity and are essential to our continued growth and our continued relevance in this world and I am proud to be a member of NSGC. So, let, so let's end with 40. As we celebrate the 40th anniversary of NSGC, I hope you all take the time to share with others what you hold dear about being a genetic counselor. What are you proud of about our profession? 
I hope you also take the opportunity to share with others what you see as our vision or what your hopes are for our profession and our organization over the next 40 years. But most of all, I hope you, ha you take some time during this week to be present. Look around, take in everything that's happening and where we are now, because I think it's pretty great. Thank you.